Alright guys, so tensions are escalating in Israel. Let's talk about it. So a couple days ago, one of the lawmakers in Israel, his name Ben Gavir, went up to the Temple Mount and started talking about how he's going to let people from all faiths uh, practice their face up there and walk, be able to walk around without being hindered and all this and that. And apparently that was enough to cause the Arab world to go into a fit of rage. Right after that, the Jordanian parliament had a session where they were referring to Israelis as pigs and apes and they were swearing that the mother the Arab mothers Muslim mothers are having are going to have more kids for the sole purpose of becoming martyrs to destroy Israel so you know needless to say needless to say things are are heating up tensions are heating up and then right after that you had video come out where Hamas was practicing storming the border of Israel you had Iran going on TV a couple days ago saying that Soleimani's death is going to be avenged and then directly after they said that our bases in Syria got attacked now you've also got Turkey and Syria making agreements with each other to ally against the Kurds and push the United States out of the region. So, you know, these things are prophetic, guys. Um, the Euphrates is dried up. And when the when the United States troops, U.S. troops pull out of that region, it's going to open up the path for Iran to go west and help to encircle Israel. So, Israel's already surrounded by our enemies, but when the Persians come, go cross that Euphrates River, you know, man, the time is near. These are definitely signs that uh, the tribulation is about to begin. You know, I, I don't know what all of you think about the rapture, you know, whether it happens pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. Uh, quite frankly, I, I think it's very clear that uh, the gathering up of the saints happens post-trib. And I think Jesus was very clear in Matthew 24 at the, the, the timeline of events following up to that. So, you know, if you, you know, if you know prophecy or you don't know prophecy, you know, either way, it, right now is the time to be studying it more than ever before because these things are happening and you're you know the abomination that causes desolation occurs after Israel gets destroyed and and ends with a flood flooded out right and then then there's there's an agreement that's made for 7 years and that agreement is broken in the middle of the 7 years so <clears throat> that's what we're looking for and the things that are leading up to that in my opinion is Israel being surrounded by our enemies invaded and destroyed <clears throat> and you know I mean all it takes is them to just put a tabernacle tent up there on the Temple Mount it doesn't have to be a structure you know the ta the original tabernacle was was just a tent guys so I mean they, they don't they don't have to get you know, a structure that takes a year to set up. I mean, you got the right dimensions for the tavern, the tent, and you put it up there overnight. You put it up there in a matter of, a, you know, an hour. It could be up, and they could be doing their sacrifices. So, you know. Anyways, you know, I'm talking about these things because obviously I think they're important. Um, Babylon in this time frame gets destroyed by fire and then the mark of the beast goes out becomes mandatory and the bible is very clear anybody who accepts the mark of the beast will burn in hell for eternity so 
you know, knowing how to distinguish these things and to tell when these events are occurring is of eternal importance. Eternal importance. Because your very soul could depend on how you respond to this thing, right? So, um, just putting that out there. Tensions are escalating in Israel. Seems as though the tides of war are starting to foment. You know, Jesus Jesus was very clear, you know, the beginning of sorrows. He, he described the beginning of sorrows, Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. Le these things that lead up to the tribulation. There'll be wars, rumors of wars, famine, pestilence, earthquakes, right? And then the tribulation, which is the persecution of the saints. And, you know, I, I don't want to really talk too much about Tim LaHaye, but, but I have to because I think he's responsible for confusing a lot of people. Uh, Tim LaHaye doesn't even mention the persecution of the saints in the tribulation. I think he gets the tribulation confused with the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows is is in chapter 24, verse 4. And then Jesus describes the tri tribulation, verse 9. And he's very clear. He says, those who make it through or those who endure to the end of the tribulation will be saved. And then he describes the great tribulation being being uh, the abomination of desolation. And, and then in verse 29, he, he says very clearly that immediately following the great tribulation, the sun will not give off its light. The moon will not shine. The stars will fall from the heavens. The powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then you will see the sign of the Son of Man in the clouds and the whole world will mourn because of this and the elect from across the four winds will be gathered up so you know fr you know from the in both the beginning of sorrows the tribulation and the great tribulation there's false prophets throughout the whole time and and Jesus said don't don't be deceived you know during during the beginning of sorrows there's there's many people who claim to be Christ but he said, you know, that's not how it's going to be. When the Son of Man returns, he's going to return in the clouds, right? The whole world is going to see him, and they're going to mourn because they weren't ready, right? They weren't ready for him. So get ready. You know, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, you need to get on your knees, ask for forgiveness, and start opening the Word of God. Figure out who was Jesus, right? Jesus was the Son of God, born of a virgin. He was the atonement for our sins, okay? He was the Lamb of God that atoned for the sin of mankind. The only way to God is through His atoning sacrifice, through believing, accepting, taking in His sacrifice, believing it, right, and trusting in His sacrifice, to make you right with God. The blood of lambs and bulls cannot make you right with God. Right? Only the sinless, spotless Christ, his sacrifice. Right? He was sinless. That's why he was a perfect sacrifice. You know. So he gave his life up as a ransom for many. And he's coming back. And when he comes back, He's coming back with a sword. Okay? So, be ready. Be ready. Anyways, guys, um, you, you know, we've got a lot of things to watch out for now. <laughs> you know, when it talks about earthquakes, it talks about the sun getting dark and the moon get, getting dark. You know, that kind of stuff hasn't happened yet. But you know, if you follow what's going on in the heavens, you know it's coming soon. So, anyways, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and as always, don't forget, help out your neighbors.